Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for the sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're rewinding back to, see the new set of cards I'm going to make, and find out how you can download the printable for free. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to stop by and rewind to an old issue of Sheet Load. Sometimes I switch it up a little bit, sometimes I just use as is and make a new set of cards. Well, this month, I'm going to be rewinding to September of 2020. This was a special Slimline card edition, which it might have been the only Slimline card edition. I'll have to check on that. If you follow the supply list and cutting guides, it is going to yield you six slimline cards. And if you look here at the pattern paper cutting instructions, you will see that we do have quite a bit of pattern paper left over. So today we'll see if we can use that to decorate the inside of the cards. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can download this edition if you haven't already. So make sure to keep watching. In front of me are the main supplies that I'm going to be using. I chose a rainbow, kind of a fallish rainbow of Gina K Designs inks. I will list those individual colors in the description box below. And for my stamp set today to match my pattern paper, which we'll take a look at in a second, I got out this clear stamp set from Tailored Expressions and it is called Big Rainbow. Now, as I was going through my stash, I knew that I wanted to use a rainbow stamp set, but I wasn't sure which one to use. So, since the printable is to size if you print it at 100%, I went through and I held up different sets to the print to see which rainbow I like best to fill that area. And so I did decide on these. For my pattern paper and matting cardstock, I got out some pieces I had bought at Joanne a while ago on sale. I got this Basil Pale Rose cardstock for the matting. Now the instructions do call for two eight and a half by 11 pieces, but because this is 12 by 12, we'll only need one. For the pattern papers, I chose these two by Jen Hadfield. They are both from the Reaching Out collection. I liked the fun rainbows with that gingham pattern. Now I will later on add cardstock for my card bases. And as I get into the process, I'll tell you about other tools or products I add. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Normally I get started with the sheet load by cutting the pattern paper, but since my cardstock is a little bit this time, since I'm using one piece, I'm going to show you how I cut that first. Basically my goal is to get six pieces of each size from this 12 by 12 cardstock. So I start by cutting it at seven and a half inches tall and then down into pieces that are two and a half inches. And I just cut until I got as many as possible from this piece. Now I will tell you that the only way I got all of my pieces from this piece of cardstock was because of that branding strip. So if yours doesn't have that extra little bit on the end of color, you might need a scrap of the same colored cardstock. Once I had the larger pieces or piece A cut down, I then used the scraps that were left over to cut the pieces that were two and a half inches wide by one inch tall. Again, I just kept cutting until I had six pieces of each. One thing you will see me do here is that these pieces become so small that I can't really hold them with my fingers. So I brought in a piece of Scotch removable tape to hold those in place while I cut them down. I will use this same piece later for the same idea. 
Now we'll get those pattern papers cut. This is just as simple as following the cutting guides, but I will show you how I cut this first sheet. You will want to make sure before you make that first cut at eight and a half inches tall that you do know if your pattern paper has a top or bottom. The next piece gets cut. Actually, no, it doesn't get cut. What's left over should be three and a half inches. But again, because I have the branding strip, I did have to cut that off. Then you just rotate those pieces and cut them to the final sizes. Piece A is three and a half inches wide and piece B is two and a quarter inches wide. I just kept cutting until both pattern papers were done. Next, I brought in six pieces of cardstock for CS1, and I chose kind of an off-white. It's between a white and an ivory, and this will end up being the card base as well as the piece for the sentiment. I'm going to start by cutting piece A, which is just making a cut at 7 inches. This will end up later being scored and folded for the card base. And now for piece B, instead of just cutting one two and a quarter by three and a quarter inch piece from the scrap that was left over, I'm going to cut as many as I can. And that way later I just have less of those larger pieces of scraps left over. I do use this color cardstock a lot, so I will definitely use the other pieces that I cut off. Now we're going to do some scoring. Normally I would get out my score buddy, but you see this piece does hang off. You could always try scoring the top half, moving it up and scoring the bottom half or scoring half and turning it around, but you'll never quite know if that center score line meets correctly. So since I do have another option, and that's this We Are Memory Keepers cut and scoreboard, I did pull that out for these larger card bases. Now this cardstock probably is lightweight enough that I could just fold it by hand, but I did want to go ahead and give it a nice crisp fold. When I do my scoring on this, I usually run my bone folder down that crease line three times kind of gently. I find that when I try to do it harder or, you know, only do, you know, one hard score at a time, that my little bone folder usually slips out of the track and I end up not getting a nice straight line for that fold. I continued adding the score to each of the card bases and here's a look at those folded up. Now we're going to work on those stamped focal points. I'm going to start by stamping the rainbow outline onto my piece of cardstock and then later I will stamp the individual arcs in that. For now I'm going to use my original size Misty and put the rainbow toward the top center of my piece of cardstock. I did decide on the little hello sentiment so I placed that underneath the right side. And once I made sure everything was nice and straight on the door of my Misty, I inked the rainbow up and stamped it. Now, like I've been saying a lot lately, my ink pad is dry, so I did stamp each one a couple times. Now, the great thing about the Misty, of course, is I can set this up once and then stamp it onto the remaining five pieces of cardstock. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp the individual arcs in the multiple colors. You will notice that I have gotten out my mini Misty and that's just because I went ahead and left the rainbow set up in my original one in case I messed any of these up and had to redo it. That way it was all set up and ready to go. I will be stamping two arcs at a time so I put one in each corner and I set up the largest two arcs. For these I will be using the orange and the yellow inks and the great thing about this is once I ink up each arc and stamp it I can just switch these two out and then ink them up again and do another stamp. Now I have two arcs stamped on two of the rainbows. I continued this process making sure to clean the arcs in between each of the colors and get them switched out until they were all stamped. Now on that close-up you might have noticed that the arcs aren't stamped perfectly in the outline and that is how this stamp is made to be because imagine how hard that would be to get them quote unquote perfect. So this is more of kind of a wonky rainbow and I love that about it. It really has the same feel of the pattern papers. While I work on stamping more of the rainbows, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. 
Now, normally these are just fun little questions to get to know each other better, but today I'm kind of looking for some feedback from you. I have had a few people reach out and want to know if I will ever do a five by seven card sheet load. Well, to be honest, I have never even thought about it because I don't keep those size envelopes on hand, but maybe there is enough interest out there. So today I would like to know, is there another card size? Specifically, are you interested in five by sevens that you would like to see a sheet load made from? You can leave your answer in that comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered it and would like me to see it. If there is enough interest in either the five by seven or another size that you let me know about below, I will consider that for the future. Now, you know, five of you say, oh yes, I'd love a five by seven. I probably won't do it, but if I get quite a few, maybe 25, 50 of you, then I will take a poll on my channel. So I'm anxious to see your answers. Once those rainbows were stamped, all of the pieces were ready, so I started putting the cards together. The first thing I did was add my stamped rainbow piece and one of the pattern paper pieces to the bottom of the skinny cardstock strip. I did try to get an even border around the top and outside of the rainbow and the bottom and outside of my pattern paper. Now there is a gap there, but you'll see here that the small skinny strip of cardstock will go across the center and cover that up. Now this might be a good piece if you wanted to add some texture with an embossing folder to that, or you could tie some fiber around it. Again, sheet load is just a jumping off point so you can make it your own. Once all of those pieces were adhered together, it was now time to get them put on their larger pattern paper counterparts. For this, whatever is the bottom pattern paper on the skinny strip, it will go on to the opposite pattern paper for the background. I continued to add these pieces to their backers, and then I spent about 10 minutes looking for my last piece of gingham pattern paper. I could not find it anywhere. I tore my desk apart. I checked the trash. I checked the recycle bin. Well, lo and behold, it was just stuck to another card that I had put together. So once I finally found that, I got that final one done, and then these went on to the card bases. Now that is pretty self-explanatory for this, so I will kind of just scooch past it, but basically I put adhesive on the back, it gets placed on the card base, and this will fill the card front completely. Now it's time to use up some of those scraps to decorate the inside of the cards. I knew that from each of my scraps I would need to get three pieces, so from the tall skinny strips I'm going to cut these down into half inch wide strips. And again you'll see me here use that piece of scotch removable tape to help hold those in place while I make the cuts. Once those are all cut down, I'm going to take the other scraps and I cut these to just slightly under three and a half inches wide and then into pieces that were one inch tall. Now I do slightly less than three and a half just because that fold on the inside does take up some of the room and I need to have it be able to close. Here's a look at what I had left over after I cut the pieces up for the inside. I would say that's a job well done. I brought in this punch from Stampin' Up to add a little fishtail on the end of each of my skinny strips. I just like the little added detail this gives. Now once those were all done, I did go ahead and place one of the larger pieces of pattern paper on the bottom inside of a card, and then when I was getting ready to add the skinny strip, I decided that I wanted just a little something more up there, like maybe a piece of that second pattern paper. So since my skinny strip was so long, I brought in my little trimmer and I cut three and a half inches off the top. Then once again, I brought back in that punch, added the fishtail at the bottom, and now I went back in and added two pattern paper skinny strips to the side. I think that this makes better use of those scraps and I like the detail it gives. Also, since there is so much room on the inside of a slimline card, this will allow me to write less. <laughs> 
To finish the cards off, I brought in some enamel dots in shades of blue and I placed three under the left side of the rainbow. I used a combination of light blue and dark blue and I thought this kind of reminded me of a cloud on that left side and it balances out the hello over on the right. I continued adding these until they all had enamel dots and here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this month's Sheet Load Rewind. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable. As always, Sheet Load of Cards is free for subscribers to my channel. So please make sure before you click on the download link, which I'll tell you where it's at in just a minute, that you have already clicked on that subscribe button. I don't make you send me any type of proof, we do just go on the honor system here. In the description box below, all the way down at the bottom, I have a link to the September 2020 PDF. Below it, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is the password. You can click on it and view it on screen, or you can download it to your device to print it. If you are going to participate in the rewind, I would love for you to use the hashtags at the top and the special one that you see up on screen now. This just lets me know that it is a rewind. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.